Hey everyone, it's Angela with foodstorageandsurvival.com. Welcome back to our 72 hour kit, emergency kit series. Uh, this week we are talking about clothes for your kit. And so this is, this is an interesting topic. Um, really depends for you, might be different for me. This is where your kit is being built for you. So I want you to consider as we talk about this, we're going to ask some questions. These are questions that I had to answer to pack my own kit, but you're packing your kit for you and for the circumstances that you may run into. And so let's go through these questions and see what you can figure out that maybe you want to put in your kit for clothes. All right. Number one, question number one, are you staying or are you going? This is really an important question, partly because if you're staying, as long as you've done laundry recently, you are good to go. You've got clothes, right? We all have clothes at our house. So if you're staying, sheltering in place at your home, you probably really don't even need to put clothing in your 72-hour emergency kit. However, if you are planning to evacuate, to leave your location, that's when you need to start thinking, what am I going to put in my kit? What kind of clothes do I want to have in there? All right. Question number two, this is going to make a big difference too. If you're leaving, if you're evacuating, where are you going to? Are you going to a shelter somewhere? Are you going to grandma's house? Are you going to a hotel? Are you going to go live in the woods? Okay, totally your choice. Whatever your plan is, try to pack clothes that are appropriate for that. Okay, I would pack differently if I was going to the woods than I would if I was going to grandma's house just my own personal preference on what I would want to wear in those locations. All right, question number three. This, this is a fun question. Do you want to blend in or do you want to stand out? If you're going out to the woods, you're probably going to get away from society, get away from people to hide, uh, to be able to be in a safe location and not be found. So you don't want to stand out. You want to blend in. So maybe here's where you bust out the camo and have some camo in your kit or at least some dull earthy colors so that you can kind of blend in the woods and not be seen so easily. If you're going to blend in walking through the city, then you're going to want to wear normal looking clothes. You're not going to want to wear clothes that look like you're decked out for a survival scenario. Okay, just get some average looking clothes to go through your city so that you don't stand out and look like a target. Uh, if you're going to a shelter, maybe you do want to stand out a little bit. There's going to be a lot of people there, supposedly a safe environment. But if I'm taking all my kids to a place where there's a lot of other people, and I do this in my normal life, okay, <laughs> then I want to be able to find them easily. And so in our kits, I've actually packed their kits with matching colored shirts. They're not all exactly the same shirt, but they're all the same color so that I can glance around, look for that color. I know what I'm looking for. I can count my kids quickly, know that they're all still there. I actually have done this when we've gone to places where there will be lots of people like the zoo or a town festival or something like that. And it works really, really well, especially if you've got the toddlers that love to wander off. Okay. You, if you've got them in bright colors, if you've got them all in orange, or everybody's wearing fluorescent green that day, they're real easy to find. Okay, it's same, same kind of deal if you're going to a place, you know you're going to go to a shelter or something like that where there will be lots of other people and you're going to need to keep track of your family. Just an idea. I would not go so far as to, to print matching shirts that have your names on them. I did actually see one, one place that suggested putting names on the shirts, but no way am I putting names on my kids' shirts because I don't want some stranger acting like a friend that shouldn't be a friend. Okay. All right, question number four, what is the weather like? Are you going to run into cold, hot, humidity, sunshine, rain, snow? What are you going to get? Uh, this is one of the reasons that it's suggested, and, and I actually really agree with this, that you rotate your kit every spring and fall. So every six months in the spring and fall. 
And if you do that, then you can swap your clothes out to where, okay, springtime, your summer's coming. You can put in the clothes that you're going to need to protect you from sunshine. And in the, in the fall, you swap those clothes out and add the clothes that are going to keep you warm. Okay, even if you're planning to go to a shelter or grandma's house, you may get stuck along the way. You might need to spend a night in your car. We don't know for sure, so it's good to be prepared for some weather events. All right, layers here. Layers are good. Uh, we have everybody packed with uh, thermals. Let me show you, see if I can find them here. Yeah, who knows? Oh, there they are. Okay, this is my kids' thermals out of their 72-hour kit. And if you've got thermals, then you've got a base layer, and you have... Um, you're able to use that also for pajamas. If you're going to grandma's house, they can sleep in those thermals and be perfectly happy. Okay, question number five, do you have shoes? I actually wrote an entire article on my blog about shoes and how important they are and how to keep them on you all the time. And one of my favorite suggestions, my favorite things that I do is to retire my hiking shoes before they're completely worn out. Okay, when they're comfortable, and they're just starting to show some good wear, and I think, yeah, they're still good shoes, but they could be replaced. That's when I replace them. And I take those good shoes, and I've got a pair in my car, in my car kit, and I have a pair with my emergency kit. And so I tie it onto my kit, or they're placed next to the kit, so that I've got a pair of decent shoes that I've already broken in, and I can wear those there with my kit, so I have them ready to go. Okay, question number six. This is a good one too. If you packed your kit six or 12 months ago or longer, do those clothes still fit you? Did you gain weight? Did you lose weight? If you lost weight, great for you. Way to go. Uh, did you get pregnant? Congratulations, but guess what? Your clothes don't fit anymore. Did your kids grow? I guarantee you they did. Hey, I like to pack in my kids' kits a size up from what they're actually wearing. That way if I forget to rotate, which sometimes happens, then those clothes are more likely to still fit them. You can always wear clothes that are a little bit too big, but if your clothes are too small and they're falling off, I mean, the clothes that are too big, you can safety pin so they'll stay on. But if they're, if they're too little, you're not gonna be comfortable in them. Your kids won't either. Okay, and this is another reason why rotating your kit is so important to get into that kit once a year at least every six months is even better and check out the clothes that you have in there and just see do they still fit me are they going to work is this going to work for the, the months that are coming up okay all right now here's just a couple of pointers just for fun before we wind up here uh, number one is you don't need three days worth of clothes just because this is a 72 hour kit doesn't mean you have to have three days worth of clothes. Ask any teenage boy. You don't need to change your clothes that often. Okay? Maybe three days worth of a change of underwear if you're really into cleanliness there. Great. Go ahead and do that. That doesn't take up much space. But you don't want to fill your entire kit with clothes because you need other things in your kit like your food and your water and your medical supplies. So clothes is only a part of your kit. You can't let it take over the entire kit. This is a survival scenario. This is not a fashion show. It's okay to only have the clothes that you run out of your house in and one change of clothes and maybe something to sleep in. And if you've got those layers in there, then you've got options anyway to where you can rotate around what layers you've got on and you're gonna be okay. All right, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is how much space those clothes take up in your kit. And what we've done is to vacuum seal them. And I have a food saver vacuum sealer and I vacuum seal the clothes and it makes them take up less space. It also protects them from uh, getting wet in case my kit gets wet somehow. My clothes are still gonna be dry. And I write on the packaging because you know once you vacuum seal that, what, what the heck is it, okay? So I write on there what it is and the size that it is and that way I always know what this is a package of girls thermal size 7, 8. And those are going to fit my middle child, my second daughter. A couple of pairs of socks. I mean, they pack down pretty, pretty tight. If you've got an infant with diapers, I did the same thing with my diapers. Vacuum packed my diapers. 
and it keeps them nice and tight. They don't take up too much space in your kit if they're vacuum sealed. Just one extra little tidbit for you moms of little babies. All right, that winds us up for this week. Thanks so much for joining me, and we will uh, catch you again next week. You can always catch more from me on my blog, foodstorageandsurvival.com. Thanks so much.